Hi students, welcome back to class. This is the second part of the chapter Applications of Derivative. In this section, we will be <coughs> discussing about increasing and decreasing functions. Okay, while giving you the introduction of this chapter, we just said that uh, an increasing function means uh, if the graph of the function rises upwards, considering it from left to right, then we can say the function is increasing. So, uh, if it's going down from left to right, then we can say the function is decreasing. This is the simplest definition. But uh, uh, in this section, we'll go detail into it. We'll check out what are the things do we have to learn in this. Uh, we'll check out what are the things we have to learn in this uh, topic and how will be the questions asked and all. Okay, so let's go. So these are the things that we have to learn in this topic. Uh, strictly increasing function, increasing function, strictly decreasing function, decreasing function, neither increasing and nor decreasing function, neither increasing nor decreasing function. So what is strictly increasing? So geometrically, suppose a graph of the function is always rising up, always rising up. Okay, then this is strictly increasing. The graph should never come down. It should always rises up in an interval then we can say the function is strictly increasing in that interval okay now what will be increasing what is the difference between strictly increasing and increasing so increasing means the graph of the function either rises up or at some points there will be a horizontal line okay so uh, in, in this interval this is a horizontal line and after that it's increasing again so the graph is increasing then there was a horizontal line again increasing. So this kind of function is increasing function. We can't say the function is strictly increasing because at some points the graph of the function is just a horizontal line. This line is parallel to x-axis. So this kind of graph is uh, the function is said to be <coughs> increasing function. Like that, strictly decreasing means if the graph always goes down, then this is strictly decreasing and suppose it makes in between it makes a horizontal line like this okay then this kind of function it is decreasing and at some points there is horizontal line so this kind of function is uh, decreasing function now let's check out what is neither increasing nor decreasing function okay let's check out what is neither an increasing function nor a decreasing function so graph so i am explaining the geometry right after that we'll go into the topic so this time i'm explaining this you know in the terms of graphs, okay, while explaining the geometry of increasing and decreasing functions. Suppose the graph of the function is like it increases, then decreases, increases, decreases. So this kind of function is neither increasing nor decreasing function. We can't say the function is strictly increasing because it decreases in this interval, right? At this interval, this is decreasing. And in this interval, it is increasing. Here it is increasing. But we can't say it is increasing because it is decreasing also. But we can't say it is decreasing, it is increasing also. So this type of function is said to be neither an increasing function nor a decreasing function. Okay, so these are the topics that we have to learn in this section. So we'll go to uh, go to this in detail. So how can we said without a graph, how can we said the function is increasing? So let's go to this in detail. Okay, suppose y delta of x be a function and i is an interval in the domain of f in the uh, uh, f of x domain okay then let us see what will happen in increasing function strictly increasing function what happens in strictly increasing function so let us draw a graph of strictly increasing function as we know strictly increasing function will be like this okay suppose x1 and x2 be any two values in this interval any in, uh, interval which is in the domain of f suppose x1 and x2 belongs to the interval i suppose i can be this, this much from here to here mm -hmm. suppose this is the interval i okay so we are drawing graph only in this interval so all this value from here to here this is i okay so x1 and x2 belongs to the interval i okay so you can clearly see this x2 x2 mm -hmm. is greater than x1 right the value x2 is greater than x1 Okay, this is x2 from here to here. This is x2. This x2 is greater than x1 because x1 is only till here. So we are taking 
x1 and x2 in such that x2 is greater than x1. Okay. Uh, let's check out what will be f of x1. The y coordinate. Since y equal to f of x, this height is f of x1, right? So this is f of x1. Okay. This is f of x1 and this height, this is. Okay. This is f of x2. Right? This is f of x1. This is f x2. Right. Here, f of x2, f of x2 is this much and f of x1 is only this much. So, f of x2 is greater than f of x1. Right. See, x2 is greater than x1 and f of x2 is also greater than f of x1. So, here, this happens because this was increasing, right? It goes upwards. That's why f of x2 is greater than f of x1 if x2 is greater than x1. So, this kind of function uh, is said to be, or we can say, the function y equal to f of x is strictly increasing in this interval. Okay? If x1, x2 belongs to i, then it's such that x1 and x2 can be any value in the i, in the interval i. x1 and x2 can be any value, any two values in, in the interval i. Okay? So, x2 is greater than x1, uh, x1 and it implies f of x2 also greater than f of x1, then we can say it is strictly increasing function. Okay? Or if x1 is, we can say in this manner also, if x1 is less than x2, if f of x1 is less than f of x2, then this is also strictly increasing function. This both, thing, uh, both things uh, says same thing, right? x2 greater than f, uh, x1, f of x2 greater than f of x1, x1 less than x2, f of x1 less than f of x2, both are same, right? See, x1 is less than x2, therefore f of x1 is less than f of x2. So, it represents the same graph, right? So, this is also strictly increasing function. Mm -hmm. So, what is, what uh, do we mean by just increasing function, not strictly, just increasing function. Okay, in the increasing function, as we explained, sometimes there may be a graph, right? So, there is a chance that there may be a graph, uh, in the graph there will be a horizontal line. In the graph, there will be a horizontal line. So, if this is x1 and this is x2. Okay, so uh, this x1 and x2 belongs to the interval i. Suppose x1 and x2 belongs to the interval i which is in the domain, on, uh, domain of f. This is in such a way that x2 is greater than uh, x1. So f of x2 is greater than f of x1. Okay, so it is same as strictly increasing function. But there is a little difference that suppose x1 and x2 are the values in this section where we have a horizontal line where in this section see her x2 is greater than x1 but f of x2 is equal to f of x1 right f of x2 and f of x1 both can be same okay the height of the height at x1 the and the height at x2 both are equal right that means in increasing function either f of x2 is greater than f of x1 or f of x2 can be equal to f of x1 so if it is increasing function we will say f of x2 is greater than or equal to f of x1 whenever x2 is greater than x1. So this is for increasing function. f of x2 is greater than f of x2, not, not uh, just uh, f of x2 is greater than f of x1, then we can say strictly increasing f of x2 is greater than or equal to f of x1, when, uh, then we can say just increasing. Okay, increasing function. So let's check out what will be strictly decreasing and decreasing function. Maybe you already got an idea of what will be the condition for decreasing and strictly decreasing. Okay, so let's move to that. Now, we are going to explain about strictly decreasing function. So, the graph will be like this, right? So, this is strictly decreasing. Okay, uh, this is x1, this is x2, so this value is x1, this value is x2, this value is f of x1 and this value is f of x2. So what happens is here x2 is greater than x1, x2, the value x2 is greater than x1, this is x2, this is x1, x2 is greater than this x1. But what is f of x2? f of x2 is only this much and f of x1 is this much f of x2 is less than f of x1 okay x2 is greater than x1 but f of x2 is less than f of x1 because this is decreasing right the function is dropping down 
Okay, so the graph is dropping down. That's why if x2 is greater than x1, then f of x2 is less than f of x1. So this is decreasing function, strictly decreasing function. Okay, or uh, if it is like x2 is greater than x1, f of x2 is less than or equal to f of x1. This is for increasing function. This is for strict, sorry, decreasing function. This is for strictly decreasing. This is for decreasing function. Right. So. These are all things about strictly increasing function, increasing function, strictly decreasing function and decreasing function. Okay. Now, let's check out uh, what is the significance of the strictly increasing and strictly decreasing in applications of derivative. So, how can we say uh, the function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing using the concept of differentiation. Right. So, this is the theorem. By this theorem, we can say whether the function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in the given interval by differentiation. Okay, so this is the theorem that f b a function continues in closed interval a b. Then f is strictly increasing if the function is greater than uh, if f is strictly increasing function if derivative f dash x is greater than zero for all values in between open interval a b. Right. So. We can say the function is strictly increasing if derivative of the function is positive. Okay, the derivative of the function should be greater than zero. Okay, let's see how will we prove this. Okay, if you draw the graph, you can clearly understand this theorem. Uh, 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 theor clearly understand this theorem. See, suppose uh, this is a, b, and we have a function which is strictly increasing in between a and b. So, what this theorem says is the derivative is greater than 0 for all values in between a and b. So, derivative means what? Geometrically, the derivative means slope. That means slope of the tangent. Slope of the tangent should be greater than 0 for all values in between a and b. So, let us take any value in between a and b. Suppose let us take this value. Suppose this is the point in between a and b. And here you draw a tangent. Okay, slope of this tangent is, will be positive. You can clearly see that if you extend this line, here will be an angle theta. So tan theta is an acute angle. So tan theta uh, will be positive, right? The uh, tan of acute angle is always positive. So this is strictly increasing function, right? So if the derivative is greater than zero, then that means uh, the slope is greater. The slope is greater than zero. That means derivative is greater than zero. Uh, that means the function is strictly increasing. Okay, this uh, this will be an acute angle for all values in between a and b. Right. Since this is increasing, it always will make an acute angle and tan theta will be positive. But let us prove this by mean value theorem. Okay. So how will we prove this? So what we have to prove is if f dash x is greater than 0, the function is strictly increasing. Or if the uh, function is strictly increasing, then f dash x is greater than 0. So let us prove this. If the function is strictly increasing, then derivative will be positive. Okay, so function is strictly increasing means what? For x2 and x1, let x2 is greater than x1, which implies f of x2 greater than f of x1 in the given interval. This uh, open interval a is the interval. So the function is increasing, right? x2 is greater than x1, f of x2 should be also greater than f of x1. Then we can say the function is increasing. But here we have to say that if x2 is greater than x1 and f of x2 greater than f of x2, x1, then the derivative must be greater than 0. Okay. So by mean value theorem, we know that if uh, the function is continuous in closed interval AB and differentiable in open interval AB, then there must exist a C in between AB such that f dash of C is equal to f of B minus f of A by b minus a this was mean value theorem right since f of b uh, suppose this x1 and x2 x1 comma x2 be any two values in between this open interval a b so this is the mean value theorem right so this is a this is b then there exists a c in between a and b such that f dash of c is equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a suppose x1 and x2 be any two values in between a and b and c b also in between x1 and x2 so we can replace this b and a as x1 and x2 like we can say f of x2 minus f of x1 by 
x2 minus x1 will be equal to f dash of c. If it works for a and b, it should also work for x1 and x2 if c is in between x1 and x2, right? So, with f of b minus f of f, this f, uh, f of x2, since f of x2 is greater than f of x1, f of x2 minus f of x1 will be a positive value. Like that, if x2 is greater than x1, x2 minus x1 is also a positive value, right? f of x2 minus f of x1 is positive or this, uh, this uh, is greater than 0. Like that, x2 minus x1 is also a positive value. Okay, so this is like a positive divided by a positive value. So here will be a positive or we can say greater than 0. So derivative f dash of c, f dash of c will be greater than 0. That will be positive. So this is how we can say, uh, how we can prove that the function is strictly increasing function whenever the derivative is greater than 0. Okay, this is the proof of that. Okay, this is the proof of this theorem. Now, write down the remaining part of this theorem. Okay, so if f, if f be a function continuous on closed interval a b, then f dash s is greater than 0 for all x belongs to a b, then the function is strictly increasing. f dash s is greater than or equal to 0, then the function is just increasing function. Okay, since uh, equal to zero, why equal to 0? Since the function is supposed to be, we do have a horizontal line in between this, so derivative in between uh, at this points will be equal to zero. Derivative means slope of the tangent. So since we have a horizontal line, the slope of the tangent will be zero. Okay, slope of horizontal lines are zero. So the derivative will be greater than or equal to zero whenever the function is increasing. Okay, so f dash x less than zero, then it's strictly decreasing. F dash x less than or equal to zero, decreasing. And f dash of x is equal to zero, then the function is constant. So f dash of x equal to zero means always the function is like this, a horizontal line. Okay, it is not increasing or not decreasing, it always remains constant. Then we can say the function is constant. For all points, the derivative is equal. f dash x equal to zero for all x belongs to a b. Then we can say the function is a constant. Okay, now let's move on to the question or let's check out the how will we do the questions what type of questions are asked on this concept and all okay let's go so mainly two types of questions are asked from this concept one is to prove that the function is the given function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in the given interval okay so in that two things will be provided to you a function will be provided so this will be provided and an interval will be provided. Okay, we have to prove that the given function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in this interval. Okay, so how will we prove that? So this is the working rule. Working rule is first step you have to differentiate this. Find f dash x. Okay, find differentiate the function. Second step is to simplify. Okay, simplify in such a way that f dash x is we can say f dash x is greater than 0 in this interval so two things first we have to differentiate the function next is to simplify the function in such a way that we can say this function is greater than 0 in the given f dash x is greater than 0 in the given interval okay so if we succeed to prove that the derivative is greater than 0 then we can say the function is strictly in increasing function or if f dash s is less than 0, we can say the function is strictly decreasing. Okay, so this is one type of question. So second type of question is, first I think we will do an example on this question. Okay, so let us take an example. Suppose f of x equal to sin x is a function and upper interval 0, pi by 2 is an interval. So you are asked to prove that this function is strictly increasing in this interval. Okay, prove that sin x is strictly increasing in this interval. So we already know the graph of sin x, right? The graph of sin x is like this, 0, this is pi by 2 and this is pi. In 0 to pi by 2, since pi by 2 the function is increasing, right? So we have to prove this by differentiation. Okay, let's see how we will do that. So we have to prove f of x equal to sin x is 
Red line zero in the, uh, sorry uh, is increasing in zero pi by two. So first step is to differentiate. Let us differentiate f dash x, x equal to cos x. Next step is to simplify. But here there is nothing to simplify. This is just cos x is already simplified, right? Cos x. So we just have to prove that this is cos x. This f dash x should be greater than zero. That means cos x should be greater than zero. And what is the value of cos x in open interval zero pi two? So in zero pi by two means the first quadrant. In this first quadrant, all trigonometric values are positive. That means cos x is also positive. So cos x is greater than zero in zero pi by two. Okay, that means the derivative is greater than zero, right? The derivative greater than zero means the function f of x is strictly increasing. S then an arrow mark upwards means strictly increasing. Okay, so I am writing the shortcut here, but you have to write in full strictly increasing. Okay. So f of x is strictly increasing. So we just proved. Okay, let's do another question which we have to simplify, right? Take some less. Let's f of x equal to x cube. Let's take a polynomial function x cube minus three x square plus four x plus eight. Okay, this is the function. You only provided the function and interval. Let r be the interval. So all real numbers is the interval. And you are asked to prove that the function is strictly increasing on R. So prove that f of x is strictly increasing on R. So we have to prove the function is strictly increasing on R. The first step is to differentiate. Okay, working rule. First step is to differentiate. So let's differentiate this f dash of x. So f dash of x is equal to three x square minus six x plus four. So this is the derivative. So what you have to prove is next thing is. Simplify this thing in such a way that the derivative is always greater than zero. Okay, in the interval. So here interval is r. r. So we have to prove that this derivative, this three x square minus six x plus four, will give us always a positive value for any real number. Okay, so you substitute any real number at the base of x, you will get a positive value. But we have to prove that we have to simplify this in that way. So what we have to do is. See three x square minus six x plus. Let us split this four as three plus one, so that three is common in every in all these three terms. So let's take three in common. So taking three in common, so this will be three into x square minus two x plus one plus one. Is it visible? Can see? Right. It is visible. So now this is three into x square minus two x plus one plus one. Now this we can again simplify as three into this is the expansion of x minus one whole square, right? X minus one whole square plus one. So this you can uh, reduce to x minus one whole square. So three times of x minus one whole square plus one. Okay. This you can say this is always greater than zero since x minus one whole square. Will be a positive. Will be non-negative since there is a square. Square of a uh, square of any terms is non-negative, right? So x minus one whole square is always greater than uh, always greater than zero. No, uh, uh, maybe it can equal equal to zero whenever x is equal to one. So this this is always non-negative. But here it is a plus one also. Okay. So if you add one, then this will be always a positive number. This will be always. Greater than zero. That means the f dash x is always. We have proved that f dash x, which is three into x minus one whole square plus one, is greater than zero. So derivative is greater than zero. Then that means the function is strictly increasing function. So if, if we have to prove that this is strictly decreasing, we have to prove that f dash x is less than zero for our or x belongs to y. This is for strictly increasing. Okay. This is for to prove the function is strictly increasing. Okay. So this is one type of problem. Type one. Okay. Well, you will be provided a function and an interval. We have to prove that the given function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing in the given interval. This is the working rule. Okay. The second type problem in NCERT textbook. The second type problem is a function will be provided to you. A function will be provided to you. You have to find the intervals. In which the function is increasing or decreasing. Here, it was to prove that the given function is uh, increasing or decreasing in the given interval. Here, 
you have to find the intervals in which the function is increasing and decreasing. So find the intervals. So all the problems in NCRT is like either you have to prove the function is increasing or decreasing or you have to find in, the, in which the function is increasing or decreasing. So find the intervals. So you will be provided a question. Let us see how will we do that. Suppose a function is like this. Okay. You have to find the intervals in which the function is increasing and decreasing. So you can clearly see from function is like this, the negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, this is the value, suppose this is a and this value is b. Since from negative infinity to a, the function was increasing, till a the function was increasing. And from a to b, it started decreasing, then b to again infinite, the function goes on increasing. Okay, so till a it was increasing. Then from A to B, it was decreasing. From B to infinity, it is again increasing. So we have to find a, the value A and B. This A and B. Then only we can say the function is at work. At which interval the function is increasing and decreasing. So in order to find the values A and B, what you have to do is, first step is to differentiate the function. Okay, the working rule offers, uh, the first step is to differentiate. In this, uh, in this type of problems and in this type of problem also, the first step is to differentiate. Next is equate the derivative with 0. Let the derivative equal to 0. Differentiate and let it be equal to 0. Why? Because at these points A and B, the slope of the tangent will be equal to 0. Slope of the tangent will be a horizontal line. This we learned in Rolle's theorem, right? So slope of tangent equal to 0 at this point A and B. This will be this will, how we find the values A and B. If differentiate it with uh, differentiate the function and equate it with zero and solve it to find a and b. Solve to find this points. So, or in fact, these points are said to be critical points or turning points. At this point, the function trend is changing. Till this point, it was increasing and then it started decreasing. And till this point, b it was decreasing, then it started increasing. So we can find this point by differentiating the function and equal it with 0, solve it to find this points. Okay, then we will check whether the derivative was positive or negative in the in this interval, negative infinity to a. Since negative from negative infinity to the a to, to the a, the function's derivative f dash x will be greater than 0 since it is increasing. Okay, so we have to check the sign of the function in between negative infinity to a. Like that, we have to check the sign of the function in between a to b and b to infinity. Right. Uh, I think we should do a problem to get that, uh, to get a clear idea. Let's um, solve a problem. Okay. Solve to find critical points. Critical points. Okay. Uh, suppose f of x equal to x square minus 10x plus 3 be a function. So question is to find the intervals in which the function is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. So let us first differentiate this. Let us find f dash of x. f dash of x equal to 2x minus 10. Let f dash of x equal to 0. That means 2x minus 10 equal to 0. That is x is equal to 5. So 5 is the only critical point. Now, this is from negative infinity to positive infinity and here we have 5. So we have two intervals, negative infinity to 5 and 5 to infinity. Okay, so let us make a column. This is in interval, i and t means interval, negative infinity to 5 and 5 to infinity may be another interval. Okay, here I am writing sign of f dash x. So uh, sign of f dash x means what is the uh, uh, means the f dash x is greater than or less than 0 in this interval. Here nature of function. Nature of f of x. In this column we will write whether the function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So negative infinity to 5. Negative infinity to 5 we have a lot of values. Infinite values. There are infinite values between, in, between negative infinity to 5. You can take any value in between negative infinity and 5. So I am taking 4. Okay. Which is in between negative infinity to 5. So I am uh, substituting 4 at the place of the derivative. Okay. 
at the place of the derivative. In order to check that, the function is uh, increasing and decreasing. So if we substitute 4 here, 2 into 4, 8, 8 minus 10 is negative 2. So the sign is less than 0, it's negative. So we just only, we only have to check the sign. We, we are not, uh, we don't need the, we, we are not uh, considering the, So we uh, just have to find the uh, sign of the function. Uh, so here we are only interested about the sign of the, the uh, sign of f dash x. f dash of x is less than zero. We got negative two, but two. We are not interested in the value. We are interested in the sign. If f dash x is less than zero at the point four, you can take any x, uh, any value. It can be four or three or two or anything, any value in between negative infinity to five. You will get a negative sign okay a negative sign less than zero means negative sign so nature is strictly decreasing and let's take any any value in between five and infinity let's take any value in between five to infinity let's check uh, let the value be six let's take the value six so at six uh, let's check out the sign of the derivative sign of f dash x let's substitute six over here two into six is twelve twelve minus ten is two so it is greater than zero positive two which means greater than zero we are not interested in the value two we are just interested in the sign which is positive, positive 2. Okay, so strictly increasing. So these are the two types of problems in which one, uh, one problem in which the function and interval is provided and you have to prove that the function is uh, increasing or decreasing in the given interval or you have to find the intervals in which the function is increasing and decreasing. Let's do the problems in NCIT textbook. Okay, let's go. Okay, take your NCRT textbook, take exercise 6.2, we are doing question number 5, exercise 6.2, question number 5, f of x equal to 2x cubed minus 3x square minus 36x plus 7, you are given a function, find intervals in which function is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing, so you have to find the intervals, the function is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing, so what was the working rule? first, differentiate the function, okay, find the derivative, let derivative equal to 0 then find the turning points okay let's do it so differentiating the function f dash of x equal to so derivative will be 2x cube derivative is 6x square minus 6x minus 36 derivative of 7 is 0 so let us equate this with 0 let f dash of x equal to 0 that means 6x square minus 6x minus 36 equal to 0 so we have to solve this find the value of x solve to find the value of x taking 6 in common x square minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 uh, taking 6 in common now let us factorize this x into uh, product is negative 6 and sum is negative 1 so minus 3 into minus 1 so x minus 3 into x plus 1 okay so just uh, x square minus x minus 6 we factorize it as x minus 3 into x plus 2. I'm sorry, x plus 2. Okay, x minus 3 into x plus 2. Now the value of x is equal to 3 or negative 2. So at these points, the derivative equal to 0. So these are the turning points. Let's do a number line. This is negative infinity, positive infinity, negative 2 comes first, then 3. Right? Negative 2, 3. So this negative 2 and 3 divides the real number into two intervals negative infinity to negative 2 negative 2 to 3 3 to infinity 2 no, uh, divided into three intervals right you can see three intervals 1 2 3 so let's draw the column interval now sign of the derivative sign of f dash x nature of function nature of function whether the function is increasing or decreasing nature of function so interval negative infinity to negative 2 okay negative 2 to 3 negative 2 to 3 3 to infinity okay sign of f dash x let's take any value in this interval any value in between negative infinity and negative 2 let's take a negative 3 negative 3 is here so sign of f dash x means we'll check the value of f dash x at negative 3 so substituting negative 3 at the place of the derivative so this is the derivative right 
This is derivative. This is also derivative. This is also derivative. Okay. It is easy to check here. Okay. All these are derivatives f dash of x. But this is more simplified. So we can check derivative at uh, uh, sign at sign here. Okay. Let's say uh, substitute negative 3 over here. So negative 3, negative 3 means negative 6 ne uh, here. Uh, substituting negative 3 here, you will get negative. And here also negative 3 plus 2, you will get again negative. So negative into negative, positive. Um, it's greater than 0. Right? Since we are not interested in finding the value, we are only interested in finding the sign. If you substitute negative 3 here, you will get a negative number. Substituting negative 3 here, also a negative number. So negative number into negative number, which is a positive number. So greater than 0. Okay, like that, you have to take any value in between negative 2 and 3. Let's take uh, 0, zeros in between negative 2 and 3. So substituting 0 here, so negative into positive. Here you will get negative. Here you will get positive. So negative into positive, you will get a negative number less than 0. Okay. So again, we are taking a value in between 3 to infinity. Let's take 4. Checking 4 here. 4 minus 3, 1, which is positive. 4 plus 2, 6, which is also positive. Positive into positive, which will be greater than 0 again. So nature of function is here is greater than 0 since it is strictly increasing, strictly decreasing and strictly increasing. So this is the answer. So you have to find the intervals in which the function is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. Okay. Let's move to the third question. So next question is NCRT uh, question number uh, next exercise six point two question number six. There is uh, five questions. We will doing the fifth question. E part. E part. The function is f of x is equal to x plus 1 the whole cube into x minus 3 the whole cube. So this is same question. We have to find the intervals in which the function is strictly increasing and decreasing. So we have to find the intervals. So first step to differentiate the function f dash of x is equal to I have to differentiate this. We have to differentiate this by product rule. Okay. Since this is the product of x plus 1 whole cube and x minus 3 whole cube. So we have to apply product rule. So derivative of the first function 3 into x plus 1 whole square into the second function plus derivative of the second function into the first function. So derivative is that. Okay. Now equating with this with to 0, let this be equal to 0, derivative equal to 0 and solve to find the values. Okay. So let us check out. <coughs> Uh, we have to solve this, right? Let us take the common factors. Here, 3 is the common factor. 3. x plus 1 whole square. This is x plus 1 whole cube. So, x plus 1 whole square is also a common factor. x minus 3 whole square is also common. Since we here we have x minus 3 cube. Here, x minus 3 square. So, 3 times x plus 1 whole square into x minus 3 whole square. This is the common, common factor. So, what remains here is x minus 3. And here there will be an x plus 1. So 3 into x plus 1 whole square into x minus 3 whole square into 2x minus 4. 2x minus 4. Taking 2 in common. So taking 2 in common and that 2 into this 3 is equal to 6. 6 into x plus 1 whole square into x minus 3 whole square into x minus 2. This is equal to 0. Okay. So this is equal to 0 whenever x is negative 1, x is 3 and whenever x is equal to 2. Okay. So this is equal to 0 at 3 points. Negative 1, 2 and 3. Now you have to draw the column interval sine of f dash x and nature of function. Okay. You have to draw the column. I am writing all these things in this number line. Okay. But you have to draw the columns. So negative infinity to negative 1, let's take any value. Let's take negative 2. So substituting negative 2 at the place of f dash x. This is f dash x, right? So substituting negative 2. Here it will be the square. So that will be always positive since there is a square. Here is also a square. So this is also positive. And here substituting negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So positive into positive into negative. It will be negative. So here it is negative. Okay, in between negative 1 and 2, 
In between negative one and two, we have zero, right? Zero is in between negative one. So it's actually zero here and here it will be positive since there is square. So zero minus two is negative. So here it is negative. Okay. In between two and three, between two and three, let's take two and half. Two and half. I'm taking two and half. Two point five from here. Two and half. Taking uh, substituting two and half here. Here is also always positive, right? Here is square. So two and half substituting two and half here. Two and half minus two will be positive. Okay, two and half minus two will be positive. And in between three to infinity, let's take four. Take it, substituting four here, you'll get positive. So neg from negative infinity to negative one strictly decreasing. Negative one to two again strictly decreasing. Two to three strictly increasing. And three to infinity again strictly increasing. Okay, decreasing, decreasing, increasing, increasing. Right. Let's move to the next question. Next is exercise six point two, question number eight. Here it is to find the value of x for which the function y equal to, or you can write f of x equal to f of x equal to x into x minus two whole square. X into x minus two whole square is an increasing function. It's an Increasing function. So you have to find at what values the function is increasing. Okay. Uh, it is same as we are finding the intervals, but here we have to find only the interval in which it is increasing. Okay. So let us differentiate this f dash of x. So by chain rule, this two will come forward. So two into x into x minus two. So this is done. Now derivative of x into x minus two. You can use product rule, or you can consider x into x minus two as x square minus two x. X into x minus two means x square minus two x. So derivative of x into x minus two means derivative of this. Derivative of this is two x minus two. So we are done. So derivative is done. Let's take two in common from here. So taking two in common, this will become two times of x minus one, and that two into two will be equal to four. Four into x into x minus two into x minus one. So this is the derivative. We have factorized this. So f dash of x is equal to zero. Derivative equal to zero at the points x equal to one, x equal to two, and x equal to zero. This is equal to zero whenever x minus one is zero. That is x equal to one. X minus two can be zero. Then x equal to two. Or x can be zero. That means x equal to zero. Okay. So negative infinity to positive infinity. We have three values dividing this all real numbers. Zero, one, two. So negative infinity to zero, zero to one, one to two, and two to infinity are the intervals. Let's take any value in between negative infinity to zero and check whether the derivative is uh, greater than zero or equal to zero. So negative infinity to zero, taking any value, uh, taking negative one. So substituting negative one over here. So this will be negative. Then negative one here, and again negative, negative one here, again negative, negative into negative into negative, just a negative. Okay. Now zero to one, take any value in between zero to one. Let's take half one by two. I'm putting one by two here. One by two will here will be positive, and one by two here negative. One by two here negative. So negative, positive, negative. Then that will be positive. Okay. So zero to one is one of the value. We have to find the function where the function is increasing. So one is zero to one, and next we'll uh, find the other uh, integral also. So let's uh, take. In between one and two, let's take one and half. Okay, one point five. In between one and two, substituting one point five here, positive one point five here. One point five minus two is negative. So positive, negative, again positive. One point five minus one is positive. So positive, negative, positive means negative. So two to infinity. Let's take any value. Let's take three. So substituting three here. So positive, positive, positive. Okay. So this is increasing in the interval zero to one and two to infinity. Okay, so you can write f of x is increasing, increasing in zero to one union two to infinity. Right, so zero to one union two to infinity. In both these sets, the function is increasing. Okay, question number seven. Y equal to log one plus x minus 2x by 2 plus x, 2x by 2 plus x, x is greater than minus 1. We have to prove the function is increasing throughout its domain. We have to prove this function is increasing function in its domain. This is the domain, right? 
this itself is the domain x greater than minus 1. So we have to prove the function is increasing whenever x is greater than minus 1. So let us differentiate this. Okay, suppose this is f of x and f dash of x. So this is not to find the increments, this is to prove that the function is increasing function. So how will we prove the function is increasing or decreasing? First, working, what was the working rule? First we have to differentiate. Next, we have to simplify in such a way that this is always greater than zero to prove this is increasing. Okay, so f dash is log 1 plus x derivative is 1 by 1 plus x minus 2x by 2 plus x. The derivative of 2x by 2 plus x, we have to use quotient rule. So derivative, uh, derivative of 2, 2 in 2, 2 plus x minus 2 plus x derivative is 1, 1 into 2x is 2x divided by 2 plus x whole square. Okay, now we have to simplify this. Okay, to, uh, we will simplify in such a way that we can say this is always greater than 0 in order to prove this is increasing function. So, how will you simplify? Let us multiply 2 inside. So, 2 into 2 equal to 4. So, 4 plus 4 plus 2x minus 2x divided by 2 plus x whole square and 2x minus 2x will be cancelled. So, 1 by 1 plus x minus 4 by 2 plus x whole square. So, I think we should again simplify. Saying this, we can't say this is greater than 0 or this is positive. Till now, it is not it is not able to understand that this is always greater than 0. So, we will simplify it again. So, let us cross multiply. 2 plus x whole square minus 4 into 1 plus x divided by 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square. Okay, let us expand 2 plus x whole square. So, 4 plus 4x. Okay, 4 plus 4x plus x square minus 4 minus 4x divided by, taking this minus 4 inside, minus 4 minus 4x divided by 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square. So, don't expand 2 plus x whole square in the denominator. It will be like 2 plus x whole square itself. Okay, now cancelling 4 and minus 4, 4x and minus 4x, all remains is x square upon 1 plus x into 2 plus x whole square. Okay. So this is f dash of x. See, here we have three terms, x square, 2 plus x whole square and 1 plus x. x square and 2 plus x whole square is always non-negative. Okay. This is always non-negative since we have squares on these terms. So this is always non-negative. And what about 1 plus x? 1 plus x can be negative and positive but in the domain x is greater than minus 1. So whenever x is greater than minus 1, 1 plus x will be also greater than 0. 1 plus x will be always greater than 0. 1 plus x is greater than 0 whenever x is greater than minus 1, right? 1 plus x is greater than 0 whenever x is greater than minus 1. And it is provided that x is greater than minus 1. So, all these terms are non-negative. So, f dash x is greater than 0. Okay. So, we can say f dash x is greater than or equal to 0. Maybe at point 0, the whole function is equal to 0. When we substitute 0, which is in the domain, 0 is greater than minus 1. If we substitute 0, this will be 0 square means the whole function will be 0. That can be f dash s can be greater than or equal to 0. So we can say the function is f of x is increasing. Increasing. Okay, increasing function. This is that. Let's move the next list. Question number 9. Y equal to 4 sin theta minus theta. We have to prove that the function is strictly increasing. To prove function is strictly increasing in this interval. Close to the 0 pi by 2. Okay. Okay, strictly increasing, I think it's said only increasing, it's not strictly. We have to prove the function is increasing in close to double 0 by 8. Okay, so let's write f of theta is equal to 4 sin theta. For y we can write, instead of y we can write f of theta. Both are same, okay. So f of theta, f of theta is equal to 4 sin theta by 2 plus cos theta minus theta. So let us differentiate this function with respect to theta. Instead of x, here we have theta. That's the difference. Okay. So f dash of theta, we have to do, use quotient rule here. So derivative of 4 sin theta is 4 cos theta into 2 plus cos theta into 2 plus cos theta minus derivative of this 2 plus cos theta is negative sin theta into 4 sin theta again whole divided by 2 plus cos theta the whole square 
minus derivative of theta which will be 1 since we are differentiating it with respect to theta derivative of theta is 1 itself so multiplying 4 cos theta into the bracket we will get 8 cos theta plus 4 cos square theta plus 4 sin square theta whole divided by 2 plus cos theta whole square 4 cos theta into 2 8 cos theta 4 cos theta into cos theta 4 cos square theta minus sin theta into 4 sin theta so 4 sin square theta will be positive negative into negative positive minus 1 we have to again simplify this since we can say this this is greater than 0 okay so we will again simplify this what if we can simplify 4 cos square theta plus 4 sin square theta we are taking 4 in common what remains is cos square theta plus sin square theta which is equal to 1 so 4 into that one 4 4 into 1 4 so 8 cos theta plus 4 since this act we will get 4 so 2 plus cos theta whole square minus 1 okay can pay okay we will take the lcm we will cross multiply and take the lcm 8 cos theta plus 4 8 cos theta plus 4 minus of this thing 2 plus cos theta whole square so 2 plus cos theta whole square divided by so take cross multiplying this 8 cos theta plus 1 to so divide by this 2 plus cos theta whole square and this 2 plus cos theta whole square in the denominator we are not going to expand it remain like this but here we have to expand then only we will able to say this is positive or negative we will we have to get this as greater than 0 8 cos theta plus 4 minus this thing 2 plus cos theta whole square so 2 plus cos theta whole square will be 4 plus a plus b whole square I am expanding 4 plus 4 cos theta plus cos square theta okay 4 plus 4 cos theta plus cos square theta whole divided by 2 plus cos theta whole square okay now expanding the bracket applying negative okay I am writing here so negative this will be negative and this will be also negative okay so 8 cos theta minus 4 cos theta which is 4 cos theta 4 and 4 minus uh, 4 will be cancelled so 8 cos theta minus 4 cos theta 4 cos theta minus cos square theta divided by 2 plus cos theta whole square okay this is f dash of theta now take a, you can take cos theta in common from the numerator so taking cos theta in common 4 minus cos theta divided by 2 plus cos theta whole square we reached here this is simplified we simplify this see denominator 2 plus cos theta whole square will be always positive since it is the square is, uh, will be always positive since we have a square here okay 4 minus cos theta is always positive because the value of cos theta is always lies between negative 1 and 1 so maximum value of cos theta is 1 okay then 4 minus 1 will be 3 so this value will be always positive there is no chance of negative since maximum value of cos theta is 1 if this is negative we have to get the value the value of cos theta should be greater than 4 which is not possible so the, this term inside the bracket is positive and cos theta cos theta is negative and positive in respective quadrants but in the first quadrant 0 to pi by 2 cos theta is greater than 0 right in the first quadrant 0 to pi by 2 means first quadrant cos theta is greater than 0 so f dash of theta is greater than 0 for all values in between 0 and pi by 2 so we can say the function is increasing function f of theta is increasing in 0 pi by 2 okay next is question number 14 f of x equal to x square plus ax plus 1 you have provided a function and interval 1 2 it is said that this function is increasing in this interval then what will be the minimum value of a if the function is increasing in the open interval 1 2 then what will be the minimum value of a okay so the function to be increasing in this interval the function should be greater than 0 in this interval that means f dash of x which is 2x plus a should be greater than 0 whenever x belongs to 1 2 okay so a must be greater than negative of 2x the value of a must be greater than negative of 2x right and x here the value of x x can be from 1 to 2 x 
the value of x is in between 1 to 2, then minus 2 into that value will lie between minus 2 into 1 is minus 2, minus 2 into 2 is minus 4. So minus 4 to minus 2. Right. So a must be greater than minus 4 to minus 2. So a must be greater than any value lies between minus 4 to minus 2. So this is minus 4 and this is minus 2. So a must be greater than minus 4 to minus 2. That means a must be greater than minus 2. If a is greater than minus 2, then it is greater than minus 4 and minus 2 also. Right? a must be greater than any value from minus 4 to minus 2. Then it is simple, right? a must be greater than minus 2. Then only it will be greater than any value in between minus 4 to minus 2. So a is greater than minus 2. Right? The least value of a is minus 2. Okay? So I have read few questions from NCRT. Rest of the question you can do it by your own and you can ask me doubts in the comments and or you can uh, WhatsApp me your doubts. Okay. So then bye.